Hello everyone, in this lecture today, I am going to talk to you about what is direct ELISA, what is indirect ELISA, what are the principles and processes of direct as well as indirect ELISA, what are the differences between direct and indirect ELISA, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of direct and indirect ELISA. So, what is direct ELISA? So, have a look at this picture here. We have here primary antibody, okay? This is primary antibody. And this primary antibody is labeled with an enzyme, okay? So the primary antibody is labeled with an enzyme. And here, this is the antigen, okay? This is the antigen that we want to detect, okay? So in direct ELISA, enzyme labeled primary antibody binds directly with the antigen, okay? So then in the next step, what happens? When the substrate is added, the reaction between enzyme and the substrate occurs. That results in the production of some color signal. Okay? So the, then what is direct ELISA? In direct ELISA, only an enzyme labeled primary antibody is used, meaning that secondary antibodies are not needed. Okay? In direct ELISA, secondary antibodies are not needed. The enzyme labeled primary antibody directly binds to the target antigen that is immobilized to the plate, okay, as shown here. Next thing is that the enzyme linked to the primary antibody reacts with its sub substrate to produce a visible signal that can be measured. In this way, the antigen of interest can be detected. So then, what are the advantages and disadvantages of direct ELISA. Direct ELISA, it is a simple protocol, it is time saving and uh, also reagent saving because here we, we only use primary antibody that is labeled with an enzyme. So no cross reactivity from the secondary antibody because secondary antibody is not used in direct ELISA. So then what are the disadvantages of direct ELISA? high background, no signal amplification. Since only a primary antibody is used and a secondary antibody is not needed, okay? Signal is not amplified because only primary antibody is used and secondary antibody is not needed. Low flexibility, since the primary antibody must be labeled with the enzyme. Low flexibility because the primary antibody must be labeled with the enzyme. So that's why there is low flexibility. So then, what is indirect ELISA? So, unlike in direct ELISA, in indirect ELISA, first, we have here antigen, okay? This is antigen. So, with this antigen, primary antibody, okay? This is primary antibody. This is primary antibody. This binds with the antigen. And to the primary antibody, the secondary antibody, this is secondary antibody that is labeled with enzyme, okay? This is enzyme. This is enzyme. So enzyme labeled secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody and this primary antibody actually binds to the antigen. Okay. Therefore, this is called indirect ELISA because the enzyme labeled secondary antibody is indirectly binding with the antigen via primary antibody. So after this process, the substrate is added that means that the reaction between enzyme and the substrate occurs that results in the color signal, okay? So what is indirect ELISA? In indirect ELISA, both primary antibody and secondary antibody are used, okay? But in this case, the primary antibody is not labeled with an enzyme, okay? So here, as you can see, that the primary antibody is not labeled with an enzyme. Instead, the secondary antibody is labeled with an enzyme. The primary antibody binds to the antigen, okay? The primary antibody here binds to the antigen, immobilized to the plate, and then enzyme labeled secondary antibody binds to the primary antibody. Finally, the enzyme linked to the secondary antibody reacts with its substrate to produce a color signal that can be measured. Okay, visible signal that can be measured. So 
then what are the advantages and disadvantages of indirect ELISA? In indirect ELISA, the advantages are signal amplification because one or more secondary antibodies are used to bind the primary antibody. High flexibility because the same secondary antibody can be used for various primary antibodies. So then what are the disadvantages? The disadvantages are this is a complex protocol compared with direct ELISA. And here in indirect ELISA, cross-reactivity from secondary antibody might occur.